here. Real number 23 on Open Series leaderboard got very close to qualifying for our Players Championship last year, but came up just a little bit short in seasons two and three. You have to imagine he wants to get there this year as we are underway in round number 11. The Evolving Wild is how Eric will start things. And this is definitely a dragon deck from Seth. A lot of different dragons, four copies of Draconic Roar, and three copies of Haven of the Spirit Dragon. So this is a dragon deck. Brian Kilburn must be so proud. We call these R&D decks. Oh, sort of the, this is? Yeah. It's a, it's, a t it's a powerful deck. He's doing some tier one stuff, but it's trying to focus on the new synergies afforded by the new set. A rugged highlands is how Seth will start. He's at 21. Eric will sacrifice his Evolving Wild to get a mountain, and we will move along here in just a moment. If a red-green dragon-focused deck was reasonably powerful and standard, I'm willing to bet R&D would be pretty happy. Yeah. It's a Plains. we got a two-drop on the way, and it'll be a copy of Seeker of the Way here for real. It's also part of the reason, it's not just about pushing the right threats, too. It's about pushing answers. That's why it's, uh, you know, Roast is pretty pushy for a red removal spell. But if Roast is floating around all over the place, it gives you an incentive to play Flyers. You know what creatures typically fly? Dragons. Boom. Yep. That's just good design. It's just great design. Yeah. Because they fly in real life. Oh, exactly. Not that they're Thank not you. in real yeah, life, I appreciate but that. Yeah. in real fantasy. No, they fly. Extra clarification is great. You just don't want to assume too much information. <laughs> That's all. I am feeling it this morning, <laughs> I gotta say. <laughs> Here is a forest. And a couple copies of Elvis Mystic. You got your coffee? Yeah, you're we're on cup number three. You're okay. <laughs> That's... That's a bit much. The kid's heating up. Yeah. <laughs> Real looks like he's got a mountain to deploy for land at number three. Well, he might select something else, however. And this is the type of matchup where Dragon Lord Atarka could be spectacular. Yeah. Eric's going to be playing a lot of relatively small threats. Seth's deck is probably capable of stalling the game out effectively. He's good at blocking. And if he gets to that card, I mean, Secret of the Way, these Goblin Tokens. Tarka's got a lot of targets yeah, in this matchup. They're dead, and then Eric might be dead since he's an 8-8 yeah. eight, eight flyer. Three damage will come across there from the Seeker as Prowess was triggered. No good blocks there for Seth. So let's see what Manfield can put together here on his third turn of the game. One copy of Atarka's Command also in Seth's deck. It's a little out of place here. He's not really a, a Skullcrack kind of deck. Yeah, I, and, you know, I, I like the way that you've kind of said that this is kind of like a constructed pre-release. I think he just has one because, I don't know, is it good? Might be. It's got a lot of, got a lot of text. It's hard. You know, if you draw one, you're probably going to be able to cash it in for okay value at some point in the game. Giving your dragon's reach is pretty funny. <laughs> a lot of good modes. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Nash Cloud Phoenix and a passing of the turn. Ash Cloud Phoenix not an ideal threat at this stage. Uh, I think Seth would much prefer just to play a two toughness or greater blocker here. Uh, as it stands, these Horling Outbursts are going to have at least one effective attack. We'll take a draw. His fourth turn of the game. Battlefield Forge is the land. Outpost Siege is the play. We'll see what mode he wants to select. He goes with cons pretty quickly. And now everybody's going to come into the red zone. Seeker of the way is a 3-3, of course, because Prowse has been triggered. That's a spot where it's pretty attractive to name dragons. It doesn't seem too bad. But if Eric names dragons, Seth can just say no blocks. And it's not like he needs to keep these Elvish Mystics in play for the entire game. If he ramps into one big threat at that point, if Eric shoots him down, it's probably not the end of the world from Seth's perspective. So, Conservative line of play, it's close there, I think, to name Dragons, but Eric decided to go with cons instead. And as a rule, it's best to err on the side of cons. If you're going to name Dragons, you better be sure. I would agree with that as yeah. well. Because now he's got a card drawing engine online, this game has doesn't have like a very aggressive slant to it at this point, so it seems as though Eric is comfortable playing for uh, you know at least a, a handful of turns. Exactly, now. it's 
You need, I think, a preponderance of evidence to say I'm sending it to dragons because Khans is safe and powerful. Well, Seth's morph at this point, of course, is the Ashkala Phoenix that just took care of the Seeker of the way. Two Elvish Mystics, couple of lands out there. Now he's got to figure out what else he wants to do. There's a Thunderbreak region. The land is a wooded foothills. And maybe we see the attack with the morph. I, I actually like attacking with the Elvis Mystic and leaving the morph on defense. Okay. Depends what's in Seth's hand and what he's playing around at this stage. It looks like he's going to get in with the morph. This play's a little risky from a tempo perspective, because if Eric has a removal spell, he can get the region off the table, and it's not like with, with Eric at 24, he really cares that much about the trigger from the dragon. With the outpost siege, real puts a mountain into play. But Seth's perspective might also be if he has some very large threat in his hand, well, this makes it very attractive for Eric to use Chain of the Rocks on the dragon to get an attack in. And if that clears the path for an even larger threat, well, then I'm happy to take the damage this turn to set this up. Here's Stormbreath Dragon. It looks like at least that is happy to attack. Maybe the goblins are as well. It looks like Roller just wants to try to continue to push through damage here. Yeah, I do like an Alpha Strike here from Eric. He's ahead right now in life total, so he can afford to be aggressive. And if Seth wants to go ahead and put this dragon in front of a token, that's very good news for Eric. And if he trades dragon to dragon, which it appears that Seth is trying to do here, well, then that's two free points of damage. Well, Seth is moving very quick. He sacrifices Wood of Foothills very fast to search up a mountain. He's already made his blocks. We might see a spell here, too. Maybe a Carly Draconic Roar. Maybe a Tarkas Command. Oh, boy. Hoodle Lally. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Never that mind. Is this is beating. really, really good right now. <laughs> it's going to give his creatures plus one, plus one. <laughs> And yep. maybe deal three, but he's not going to lose anything is what's more important. It's pretty good use of two mana. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> New card that Eric Grill certainly didn't play around. That was a beating. Seth will draw a card now. He couldn't pounce fast enough. Yeah. Well, you draw one, you're probably going to be able to cash it in for something reasonable. I wasn't expecting it to be that good, but... Yeah, that was more than reasonable. That was great. Whew. There's a temple. We'll see where that top card goes. It's going to go to the bottom now. And it's a hard card to play around because that's, you know, Atarka's Command feels like, yeah, if you're playing this, you know, mono red splash green style beat down deck and it can pop your team and be a, a skull crack, that's the type of deck you anticipate it in. Seth's doesn't feel like an Atarka's Command deck. And Not in fact, it, it really isn't. He's only playing the one, but. Boy, oh boy, was it good there. Ashkoth Phoenix is going to unmorph. The dragons and the phoenixes are going to come in now. The thing I like about this aggro deck that Seth is playing is that he plays in the air. Yep. That's a good place to be because a lot of decks are really good at coming up the ground thanks to a card like Whirling Outburst. And Seth went from offense, uh, defense, excuse me, to offense so fast in this game. Yeah. That Didn't take much at all. That characteristic we associate with Jun decks of... Can you go from defense, defense, defense to now I'm attacking you and killing you in two or three turns? Seth's deck has definitely done it this game. Those Jun decks were great at it. We have seen Obzon decks be really good at it as well. And Seth has certainly done it this game. Now Eric's on the back foot and he's got this card drawing engine and outpost siege, but a little too slow. Yep. And that's also why I like Seth trying to close the game out as fast as possible here. He doesn't want to be playing one draw step against two for the entire game, so... Uh, he's defending himself, and now it's time to close the game out as fast as he can. Temple of Triumph. We're going to take a look at the top card. We'll see where it's going to head. Notice that he elected to play the Temple instead of the Battlefield Forge off of the Outpost Siege, which means that his hand must be pretty weak. Well, it's, at this point, he's, he's digging for help. He needs specific cards. 
and it's a little bit more efficient to play the temple there if you don't need the land specifically. As if the top card of the deck is bad, he burns one deeper, and then his outpost siege gets a look at one card that he wouldn't otherwise get to look at. So far, Grandmaster Hordling Outburst and a passing of the turn. Manfield will draw a card very quickly here. 8 to 11. Here are the attacks. Leads me to believe that he has something to finish this game off with. Yeah, Crater's Claws will be just fine. Seth Manfield going to win game number one here over Eric Rill. Red-green aggro up a game over red-white aggro. Crater's Claws, flying creatures, dragons, and phoenixes. Made it look pretty easy. Yep, just accelerating into some big threats. Had the one huge turn of break and serve with the target's command. And uh, it was a, a hairy game there. I got, got off to a pretty good start, but Seth was able to get the job done. Sideboard time, which means we will start with Eric Rill and his two Arc Lightnings, his two Erases, his three Master of the Unseen, two Glare of Heresy, two Anger of the Gods, a Chandra Power Master, a Valor Stance, a Storm Breath Dragon, and a Sarkin the Dragon Speaker. I like the Valor Stance a lot in this matchup. Seth's bringing a lot of big creatures to the table. He's also playing with removal, so Valor Stance seems excellent. Storm Breath Dragon and Sarkin, I, I think just more big threats to trade or uh, try to block. It's pretty good in the matchup here as well. None of the rest of the sideboards that attracted me. I guess Arc Lightning will likely come in because Seth is a deck with Eldritch Mystic and also appears like the type of deck that could have Rattle Claw Mystic as well. So I think Arc Lightning's likely to come in. What do we see on the other side for Seth? Three copies of Destructor Revelry, two Arc Lightnings, two copies of Hornet Nest, two Boon Seder, two Roast, three Outpost Siege, and the Scouring Sands. There's two roasts in the main deck. I don't know if he wants to go up to the full four here. Eric Sek does have some targets, but a lot of them are pretty low impact. He does have some flyers and Horling Outburst, so uh, I could see bringing in more roasts. I could see kind of keeping it at two or maybe three. I like the Hornet Nest and the Arc Lightning a lot in this matchup. Hornet Nest is a delight. One yes. of my favorites. I expect it to probably be pretty good here, too. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really good against Horling Outburst. And it's combo with Roast. Oh, baby. That's a thing. That is... Roast the hornet's nest. Yeah, Look at you. Blow it up and release the bees. <laughs> well, these players will sideboard. They will get ready for game number two. Both these decks very interesting, as have most of our standard decks that we have seen so far. Jeff Hoogland's Blue Red Dragon stack. A lot of awesome ones. You can play them at the state championships in just a couple of weeks. We've got two great events starting on April 11th. Yep. This is Pro Tour Weekend coming up in two weekends. So if you're interested in playing the standard format, which looks great, or modern. We have a two-day event, Saturday and Sunday, starcitygames.com slash states for more information. We have two playmats that we're giving out for these events. This is the top eight playmat for the standard state championship. And then on Sunday, we give out our modern playmat. If you're lucky enough to win both of these, you can put them together and create this piece of artwork, starcitygames.com slash states for more information. Again, standard states, Saturday, April 11th, and then the following day, modern states, Sunday, April the 12th. You can head over to the website, Find the event nearest to you. I'm going to battle. You're battling? Yeah. That said, oh, the, the last states I played in, I got third place. Third place at the last Star City Game states in the fall. Okay. You got to do better than that. And gotta, there gotta, was no modern to play. Gives me a reason to dust off the old Tron deck that's not good anymore. Oh, yeah. You get to play, play a little bit of Tron? Yeah. Basically my favorite thing to do. So this is, uh, is going to be a good weekend. I'm a big glutton for punishment fan. Okay. You love something, you just bang your head against the wall yeah. every chance you get. Love it. No one's going to stop me from playing Karn Liberated. Is it good right now? Probably not. Can't beat a Deceiver, Exarch, or a Pestermite. Who even cares? Yeah, it's, you know. That deck's, you know, like far and away the best deck. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's <laughs> so much better than the rest of the field. <laughs> but I don't care. I, I Do just you like playing play. blue-red control with a bunch of individually awesome cards with a just two-card kill rolled in at a very low deck-building cost? No. Do you no, like I having don't. a deck that has a combo that your opponent has to sideboard for, and you can just cut it and become a blue-red control deck? No. You don't like those things? No, I don't. I don't like playing with or against those things. Your opponent has a bunch of stupid combusts in their deck while you have Batter Skull and Karanos. <laughs> Does that sound attractive to you? <laughs> that deck is really, really good. Yeah, it really is. Seth actually played that deck. Got second place with it. I might mix it up in states. I got to see where it's being held. Because California is a big state. It is a big state. Nothing small about California. But Mono Red's pretty sweet. And I've not played a sanctioned tournament this year, I believe. So it'd be fun. Got to dust that wand off. I know. I can see you 
you really need to you need to jump in here and just start dashing a couple creatures. I know. I see it'll what feel, it feels it'll like. It'll feel pretty good. Yeah, so just see what it feels like really quick. Zergo Bell Striker was basically made for you. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting taunted a little bit. Because they didn't make him this juicy when I was playing a couple of years ago. I know, I know. Evolving Wilds, how Eric will start game number two. The one stop they gave me was Goblin Guide. And you got a lot of work done with that. Searing Blaze, I guess. Here's a Temple of Abandon. Shrine of Burning Rage. I hate that card. That card is a horrible design. Yeah. <laughs> Play it on turn two, and then it's T minus 10, <laughs> nine, eight. <laughs> None of the other shrines that good. Just watch, just watch this thing. I'm just going to play my game, and then a couple turns down the line, it'll have 14 counters on it or something, <laughs> and that'll be that. Here's a seeker of the way. Let's see what Mansfield has on the second turn here. A forest. A Radical of Mystic. A little bit of acceleration. And that's why I expect the Arc Lightnings to come in. I think they are a little dodgy against some Man Acceleration decks, because besides Elvish Mystic, there isn't a lot of ramping to be done. Since that deck is on the aggressive side of things, it makes sense that he would have this alongside Elvish Mystic, and then Arc Lightning becomes a great card to bring in. So you're going to come into the red zone here. I would be surprised if Seth blocked. I mean, Seth might be saying if he's gonna if he's gonna play a spell inside of combat, it's probably a removal spell. So yeah, just yep. lightning strike the dome. All right. The lightning strike would have just gone on the rattle call mystic anyway. And if Seth and if Eric has literally nothing, Seth might be happy to make the trade. All right. Well, consider me surprised. But Seth must be okay with this exchange, as he thought about it for a little while, made the block, and he seems okay with this. Yep. Well, Seth's deck is definitely more powerful. If he's able to get his way out of the first couple turns of the game, he's just gonna have more hits than Eric does. Here's a temple. There just aren't that many spells that just blow Seth out. Yes, he'll, he'll trade one for one with something, but it's not going to be a, a no trade at all. There's an Elvish Mystic and a passing of the turn, so Seth's mana looks to be just fine. Seeker coming on in. Looks like Seth will take two. There's a Plains. There's a Seeker. Pass the turn. Let's go back Manfield's way. Four mana. Thunderbreak region. Rugged Highlands up to 16. That's the brick wall. Or at least an attempt to be. Yeah, now this is the stage of the game where Eric needs to produce a lot of cards like Stoke the Flames and Chain of the Rocks. If he's able to do that, he might be able to close this game out before Seth's able to deploy his hand. But he, if he ever stumbles at this spot, Seth gets an opportunity to take over. There's Chain of the Rocks. See you later, Thunderbreak region. Trigger, of course, will occur. Rill's going to go down to 20. Prow's good to go on both those Seeker of the Ways. Arc Lightning will allow this to happen again. This is a good turn. This is a great turn. You weren't sure if Arc Lightning was going to come in. Well, you know now. Yep. It's there. A real delta. A lot of damage here. So four, eight, nine, ten points of damage. Yeah, this one. Seth's going to need something nice. I think Eric may have Stoke left over in his hand. Yeah. Go is not a great sign. Probably not, no. For a deck that's nearly all creatures. There's the attacks. Destructive Revelry. I was wondering if Seth was going to bring this in because it's so good against Chain the Rocks, but it's very narrow otherwise. It's actually really nice for Eric to find out about that card, too. Yeah, yeah, this is nice. I mean, <laughs> it looks like Eric has the tools to still win the game, the, uh, win the turn this game. Or, excuse me, win the game this turn. Yeah. Is this, another, is this a Tarkus command, maybe? Draconic Roar. Okay. We're going to play out a little bit longer here. Uh, I mean, it's not bad. Because yeah, Stoke is going to take care of the yeah. Thunderbreak Regent. 
Seeker's going to get to come across with three points of damage. It looks like Eric has another stoke in here. Yeah, hand, I think so that's the issue. Be able to close this out. Draconic Roar, the uh, the new Searing Blaze. This is a card that I, I was I didn't think was really going to fit into decks very easily because how many dragons are you playing in your aggressive deck? But so that's the kind of deck where, you know, he's definitely in the market for two mana deal three to a creature, and he's tilted sort of aggressively, and he has a lot of dragons, so yeah. it fits in very very well here. So he's trying to figure a way out of this one. But he doesn't know that Rill has another copy of Stoke the Flames in hand. So there's a Crater's Clause. Rill able to pick up a little bit of information out the door there about Destructive Revelry and Crater's Clause. Though he saw Clause game one, perhaps he can assume that there are multiple Crater's Clause in Seth's deck, which there are as we get ready for a third game here. So Destructive Revelry only targets Chain the Rocks in Eric's deck, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, excuse me, there's Outpost Siege as well. Yep. And Destructive Revelry makes a lot of sense. Though Outpost Siege often gets cut in matchups like this. It was just too slow. But being able to blow up Chain of the Rocks is very, very nice. I was worried that Destructive Revelry was going to be a little too narrow to bring in here, but without Post Siege, probably good enough. Because both of those targets are really juicy. As a tempo swing, hitting Chain of the Rocks is incredible, and uh, Outpost Siege is a great target as well. Well, we mentioned how you can play one of these two decks at States in a couple of weeks. You can also play them sooner than that at SCG Game Night. If you're interested in getting the old rat that we have on our lapels this weekend, you don't have a lot of time left to do that. Yeah, March is closing, so if you want to get this, you got to head over to game night basically this week. Uh, every month we send out a new kit with these pins and foils. The stores can set them up however they want to, sanctioned or unsanctioned, whatever format you want. Just get players in your store regularly for some fun and friendly magic. Next up is the April kit. <laughs> and it's too late to get signed up for this one. But if you're interested in the May kit, Head over to starcygamescom slash game night and sign up today. You get a busy bee. Bzz, sweet. Bzz. And with, with Hornet Nest Roast being a thing, <laughs> standard, you are going to want to get at least five. Bzz, <laughs> at, at least. <laughs> five is the number you're looking for. Couple of bees available to me. You can get signed up for that right now as we work our way into spring. Maybe those will be part of our spring collection. Probably. For sleeves. No telling. No telling. But you see the things that are available, the rat, the kitten, and the bee across the next couple of months here for SCG Game Night. Pretty awesome stuff. The bee, iconically associated with spring. So I imagine. Yeah. Don't like bees. Cats too, kind of. Cats are like a springtime animal, kind of, right? They live in all seasons. I'm pretty anti-bee. <laughs> pretty anti-bee. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, 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 they're I Anyone mean, they're like bees. I, I like their utility. I, I don't like getting stung by bees, yeah. but they're, you know, honey's pretty sweet. Does anyone see a bee and they're like, oh, awesome, a bee. No, but that's not the point. I don't think that happens. I just, I don't like bees. Necessary evil. They're very evil. No, I don't. I mean, the term necessary evil. I understand. I, I know what the term means. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just say they are super evil. I see a bumblebee, I just run. Yeah. Like, I'm a, I'm a child. I just don't have any interest in getting Wasps, in a fight. on the other hand. Those things are terrifying. Yeah, if they build a nest inside your attic, you, like, you have to, like, vacate your house. That's they just, true. They just, they just get to take it. Yep. That's theirs. That's theirs now. They yeah. claim their territory. My brother was young. He shot a uh, he shot a bee's nest with a BB gun. Yeah, they will they will flag you down. He lost. Right. He lost. He tried to run away and yeah. lost. That's the thing. You think you can run away, but yeah. you cannot. They are faster than you. Yep. And and they don't exhaust as easily as people do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I don't I don't mess with bees. Just pretty early on in life, wasps. There are multiple hornets. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how many I don't know how many hornets I've seen in life, but we had issues in the the boondocks of New Jersey. Oh, do you? Yes. Okay. They built a wa a group of wasps built a nest behind the backboard of my basketball hoop in my driveway. So I'm just out there shooting one day, clank a shot, and then just wasps. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of wasps. <laughs> and they are fast. <laughs> So. They just terrorize people. Yeah. But again, the utility. Right. The utility you deemed is worth it. That's probably how I developed such a good jump shot, was there was a risk of me getting stung by wasps if I ever hit the backboard. Mm. 
So you better you better sink it. Negative reinforcement. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Negative reinforcement. <laughs> We'll have Seth Banfield on the play here for game number three. See if he can find an opening hand that he does like with his red-green aggro deck that is based around a lot of cards from Dragons of Tarkir. He's playing this. We've seen Ross Marion with a take on this. Matt Costa as well. Both players will lead off with the mountain. A forest here from Seth. Send it back Rill's way. And there's a Plains. Will Rill have the first play? He will to Seeker of the Way. Draconic Roar revealing a Thunderbreak region. That makes that a Searing Blaze. Yeah. The text box on this cycle of cards is a little bit clunky, but it does encourage the right thing, which is put some sweet dragons in your deck. Yeah, for sure. What if Foothills and just the passing of the turn? Back to Eric we go. I like Draconic Roar. Yep, it's cool. I was skeptical of its ability to show up in, in competitive decks, but Seth's deck is perfect for it. Checks all the boxes. Yeah. That's a Battlefield Forge. This is a Soulfire Grandmaster. Are we going to have another Draconic Roar? Oh, yes, sir. Take three more. And these Searing Blaze effects are really nice in, in Seth's deck when he has, you know, Thunderbreak region and haste threats and crater's claws. The, the damage is not trivial here. Yeah. So Rill's first two creatures have died. He's at 14. There's a mountain for Seth off of the wooded foothills. And Seth is able to play a fourth land extra in Thunderbreak region. It's basically a perfect start. Yeah. And with Eric having no board, even if Eric untaps and kills it, it's like, okay, well, you take three, and we go to the, my next turn where I probably have some other large follow-up threat. The problem in game two was Seth got behind on the board early, and he could never get in a position to deploy the entirety of his hand. This game, he shouldn't have the same problem, assuming he keeps making his land drops. I can't tell if it's land number four or not. Maybe it enters the battlefield tab. Seth looking over some things now. Okay. Hey, even... Even of the spirit dragon, too. That gets back dragons. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the point of that card. Thank you. Yeah, Eric's going to take a look. Also a mana fixer for dragons. Yep. You sure you weren't? Are we on the design team? I was not on the design no. team. Here's a chain of the rocks. And now Goblin Rabble Master. That's a good turn. Big turn for Eric. Be first good turn of the game here. If That's why Chain's so insane, too. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of tempo swing. If, if Eric's turn is just, say, Stoke the Flames, for example, well, Seth gets to untap and still have the initiative. Now, yeah. Seth has to respond or race. Now, if you're Eric, you're hoping that Seth doesn't have a destructive revelry because then things probably get pretty ugly on this game. Yep. There's two mana. Draconic Roar again, revealing Stormbreath Dragon. Really good deck building. <laughs> Just a lot of dragons. This is this is a very good turn for Destructive Revelry also. This would, oh, this would be a nightmare. If he has Destructive Revelry, this would be a nightmare. There's Stormbreath Dragon. There are the attacks. And Eric just risking it here. I don't, I don't know if he has a choice. Yep. It, He doesn't. It works out. No destructive revelry here. Seth will draw. Real hoping for the best. Eric's at, Eric's at eight and has not been attacked yet. Yeah. A little depressing. Let's sit there confirming life totals here just to make sure everything's okay. Three draconic roars and a... Thunderbreak region trigger. Yep. Pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I like the splash. Like, the, just the splash damage from the card is pretty cool. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Eight without going to combat, killing a bunch of creatures along the way. So without land number five, it's bad news. Seth has to reluctantly pass the turn. Land number five would have been very nice there. Real coming in again. Seth with no answer. 
Feels like a hand full of something. Uh oh, is he making a move? Oh boy, there's a destructive referee. Loser points to 13 and 14 without yep. combat. Yep. <laughs> I'll take my Thunderbreak region back. Thank you very much. And if Seth's saying, I'll take the damage, that's really bad news for Eric. Is this land number five for Stormbreath Dragon? Could also be Crater's Claws. Oh boy, he's attacking. Fireball. Yep. That'll do it. Seth Manfield going to win this match here over Eric Rill. Two games to one. Red Green Aggro gets the job done over Red White. His dragon base build has moved Manfield over to nine and two. And if you saw Eric's hand at the end of that game there, it was Wild Slash and Arc Lightning. So if Seth had gone ahead and used the Destructive Revelry inside of combat and tried to block the token, Eric would have been able to kill the dragon post combat and probably go on to win the game. As it stands, Seth took a little bit of a risk, but it was perfect the way that Eric's hand was set up and Seth won the next turn as a result. Seth Manfield, nine and two here at our season one Invitational, looking to make another top eight for what has been a fantastic, I'd say year for Seth. And this deck is very cool. Uh, you know, uh, decks like dragons or just big creature decks in general, you're used to just Heroes Downfall and Obzon Charm and Utter End being very destructive against those kind of decks. Hard to play with a lot of four mana, 